calculate the value of the equilibrium constant for the reaction O2 gas plus oxygen gas goes to ozone gas given reaction one. This is going to be sort of a Hess's law kind of problem. NO2 in equilibrium with NO plus O and K1 is equal to 6.8 times 10 to the negative 49. Wow, that's really, really small. And that one, which is O3, plus NO goes to NO2 plus O2. K2 equals 5.8 times 10 to the negative 34. So let's see what they're asking. They're asking you to calculate the value of the equilibrium constant for this reaction. Let's do this in blue. For this reaction, given these two reactions and their you know, corresponding equilibrium constants. Well, we know from Hess's law that if we want to find a final reaction that involves some of the reactants that we have, we have to rearrange them by either flipping them, multiplying them by constants, and in doing so, if we add all the equations together and to get our final equation, well, when we did delta H's, when we did enthalpies, we just added the enthalpy. With K's, with equilibrium constants, it's actually different. When we add equations to get a final equation, what we do to the equilibrium constants is we actually multiply them. So let's go ahead and do this one. So in order to actually come up with this, I'm going to flip equation one. I'm going to flip equation one, and that'll give me NO plus O goes to NO2. Now when I flip a, an equation, I'm, I take the reciprocal of the equilibrium constant, right? Because you're just flipping products and reactants. So that equilibrium constant now is 1.47 times 10 to the 48th. Huge. I'm also going to flip the second reaction. I'm going to make the reactants the products, the products, the reactants. When I do that, I end up with NO2 plus O2 in equilibrium with NO plus O3. Well, this equilibrium constant, again, I flipped it, so I take the reciprocal of that, and I get 1.72 times 10 to the 33rd. Now I add these two equations. NO2 cancels NO2. NO cancels NO. I'm left with O plus O2 goes to O3. This was the equation that we wanted. Now, in order to get the final equilibrium constant, I have to, I don't add these. I multiply them. It becomes K1 prime times K2 prime. So it equals 1.47 times 10 to the 48th times 1.72 times 10 to the 33rd. And I end up with getting some huge number, if I'm not mistaken, 2.53 times 10 to the 88th. That's Huge. That means that any time oxygen gas and oxygen free oxygen atom come together, you will not find them separately. This huge number tells me that the reaction is way to the right. There is no equilibrium here, not really. So any time you have a bunch of equations, if you add them together to come up with a final equation, <coughs> excuse me you multiply the equilibrium constants for all of the individual equations. So, so when we add 
equations to get a final net equation, our final k is equal to k1 times k2 times all the way to kn if we had n equations. And that's it. Okay, so we've gone ahead and dealt with a fair number of problems in equilibrium. So next time, we actually are going to continue our discussion of equilibrium. We're going to talk about Le Chatelier's principle, and then we're going to do some more problems involving Le Chatelier's principle. And Le Chatelier's principle, just to give you a little bit of a preamble, is basically just if I have a system at equilibrium, if I stress that system out somehow, if I put pressure on it, meaning if I add this or heat it up or cool it down, what happens to that equilibrium? So I can shift the equilibrium. Well, we know, well, I can tell you, a system will also always seek out equilibrium. So when I apply stress to a particular system, the system is going to respond by doing whatever is necessary to relieve that stress. You know this from just being a human being. Anytime, any system that you apply stress to, the response of that system will be, any, will be doing the things that relieve that stress. Well, a chemical system behaves in exactly the same way, and it is a very deep, fundamental thing called Le Chatelier's Principle. Uh, it's actually quite beautiful. So we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for joining us at educator.com and AP Chemistry. We'll see you.